So guys, let's see about this one. Okay. Um, this drive friction problem, and it's one that it could be in the final test. Okay, so let's just go ahead and see. This is a log, okay, that is put in this corner, not the whole thing, but some of it, okay? And it's in cantilever one meter out of in air, okay? And it has a force P going down to the left, being applied at this tip. Good, okay, so they are asking us, the find the largest force P for which this bar that its mass is 18 kilogram uh, remains in equilibrium. So that means that we need to uh, actually see what about sliding. Okay, so it's gonna be a problem about sliding. And a problem about um, tipping. So hopefully I can do it over here. Okay, so sliding and tipping. And let's just see. Well, I think I can actually move it from here to there. Okay, so let's just put it. So, okay, it doesn't really matter where I'm gonna put it, we're gonna do it. So let's just start with the sliding part. Okay, so the sliding part. The sliding part, well, we uh, I'm gonna put here the free body diagram for this thing. Okay, so let's just see what happens. So you have the P over here, got it. Its angle is 50 degrees. Let me just see points. Let me just put this point A. Let me just put here point B. Okay, maybe it's not that necessary, maybe it is. And at point C, that one. You already know the measurements, you already know the mu, and that's it. So let me just put here, around here, the W, W, which equals M times G, and the normal. So the normal would be there, okay? So like counter, uh, countering somehow the, the weight. And hey, what about the friction? Well, actually, that's why this thing is called like this, right? So dry friction. So I don't know if you see it, but let's just decompose this P. If you decompose this P, let me just, just another type of color. So if you decompose it, you will see that this thing, you have a component, which is gonna be called PX going this way, and you will have a component going down, and it's gonna be called PY, okay? So if you see that, the PX is going to the left. Therefore, the only possible way for the direction of the friction, the force of friction, should be this way. Okay, so let me just put it here. So the force of friction needs to be going that way because otherwise it cannot counter this PX. Okay, so PX is not going to the right. PX, PX is actually going to the left. Therefore, the force of friction needs to be going to the right. Okay, so having said that, Let's just do, now that we have our free body diagram, let's just do our X equation. Now our X equation, oh, I'm sorry, I like I liked how this thing looks like, like this. Okay, so maybe, maybe it gives me some, a little bit more of structure. So for the X part, for the X part, you will see that you have a minus PX going to the left. You will have a force of friction going to the right, and that's it, equals to zero. Good. Now let's just go for the Y part. For the Y part, you will have the minus PY going down. You will have the normal going up. So the normal going up and you have the weight going down minus W equals to zero going down. Okay, good. Now let's just do use the Coulomb's theory, which is the force of friction is proportional coefficient of friction uh, to the normal. So let's just put the normal over here, right? Okay, now that we have seen this, we need to fi figure out which are our data, which what is that we have in this problem. So hopefully you're with me by doing this. This P, I need to decompose it, okay? So P as a vector equals PX and PY, got it? So no problem, it's just PX and PY. But actually, since you already have this angle over there, you can know that this guy is minus P. We don't know the magnitude, but we know the direction, okay? So minus P uh, cosine of 50 degrees, 50 degrees, comma, minus going down, sine of 50 degrees, because it's going down, and the, in this y, in this minus is because it's going to the left, okay? So now that you have it, you don't know the actual magnitude, but you know the direction, therefore you can write it. 
So I know already these guys are least in terms of P. So you already have that part, right? Well, let me just use that. So from Y, from Y, I will use the N equals to, equals to a W and plus P sine of 50 degrees. Okay, that's what I have. And with this information, I'm gonna put it here. So I'm gonna put it over there. Therefore, the force of friction needs to be equal to 0 0.2 because this, that's the value of the coefficient of friction, times parentheses W plus P sine of 50 degrees, of 50 degrees. Okay, so that's what you have over here. And now that you have that, you can go back to the X, you can go back to this equation and actually get the P, uh, get something else. So from here, I'm gonna get that minus P cosine of 50 degrees. This is, px with a minus okay that's what it is so minus px cosine of 50 degrees plus plus this fell over here 0.2 w plus p sine of 50 degrees and this thing is equals to equals to zero okay okay now you know the w because w w is just 18 times 9.81 Okay, Newtons, this thing is in Newtons. And then, and then you have the point two, you have the, you don't have the P, but you have the sign, etc. So out of this, I, I, I will put in explicit form the P. So you will, you will see, okay, you will see that is, this is happening. So let me just put it. So P equals to point two, or point two sine of 50 degrees minus cosine of 50 degrees, okay, got it, 0.2 times sine, and minus cosine, okay, and the common factor is a P, okay, and this 0.2 W, I'm gonna put it in the other way, minus 0.2 W, okay, so, so far so good. Now, if you do this, the P should be minus 0.2, I'm just gonna rewrite everything, so please forgive me, 0.2 sine of 50 degrees minus cosine of 50 degrees. Okay. Now you have everything you need. Therefore, I will have, I already have it over here and you need to check it. Okay. So if you don't believe me, I wouldn't believe me because that's your job to never believe what this guy is doing in the blackboard or here in the tablet and see for yourself that this thing is correct. Okay. So you have this. What the hell does it does this number mean? Uh, this number means that uh, if you apply more than this, this log or whatever this bar is happening to that is actually moving, okay? So if you apply more, it will start sliding. When you are actually using mu s, where the, if you are using this value over here, you are thinking about the critical limit about where this thing is about to slide, okay? So about to slide. That's what this uh, number is telling you. If you apply 75, uh, 75 newtons, this guy will move. Will move where? Where do you think this guy will move? Well, this guy will actually move to the left. That's the only thing, that's the only way that it can slide. It just can slide to the left, okay? So this is the maximum value for the P so that this thing is in equilibrium. If you apply 60 newtons, you're fine. This thing is at rest. But if you apply 75 newtons, you're gonna move it, okay, to the left. Now, let's study another type of movement. That type of movement is called tipping. So let me just use from here, let me just use another one. Oh, let's just use this one. So tipping, okay, tipping, okay. So tipping about this fella over here. Now, let me just erase this stuff over here. And think about it, think about it. So I'm thinking this, I, I'm gonna do more, more of what you need to do in order to solve this problem, okay? But nonetheless, let me just think about it. I, I may think that this guy will maybe, because you are pulling it down, right? And you're pulling it, more, more, trying to move it to the, to the left, okay? So I'm thinking, let's just start thinking about it. Let me just put, this point over here, which was A, okay, here. This guy is B, and this guy is C. So I'm thinking, hey, what happens if maybe I pull this guy to the left too strong, 
therefore it may be it may be flips around like this got it so here is your log and it start doing this because you are moving it too fast the friction is so great here so that you're actually doing this got it this is what i'm trying to say so that you are gonna flip it around like this okay so let me just put one case 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 a so that it tips around a so what i'm gonna use for this it's moment at a equals to zero i'm thinking it could be doing that and you will see that it is not possible so i'm wasting your time in some way but i'm also helping you to know so maybe you can detect what could be the possibilities for the uh, the the analysis for this log okay so i'm thinking that i could that i could flip over to the left this bar okay so this bar i'm moving it so really strong to the to the left that i can actually flip it around like this towards a i mean around a okay well so let me just do it so if you do it do, 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 let's just take out the, all the stuff so if you do it what do you think will appear so around a you have it over here so around a around a what you're doing oh, okay so let's just do it over here this is the log okay so this is a got it and you may think that okay so let's just put this px you already know how much is px we have this py going down we have the weight right at the middle the weight and we have i mean if you want to do this case you need to put the normal here that's mandatory so you are thinking okay what happens if we trip we trip this bar over here so you will put the force of friction over there let's study this stuff over here okay so let's just put ourselves here so w okay w times the distance and maybe you see that this distance is right at the middle of the bar which the whole bar is three meters therefore you will be 1.5 okay so 1.5 and this is gonna be a minus according to our right hand rule it's gonna be a minus now what about py px just passes through a therefore it won't produce any moment but what about y well then you will put py it's actually p sine of 50 degrees so p sine of 50 degrees times the distance and the whole distance from here to there is just three meters and it's also a minus okay so you will get to zero right well fine and then what well what you will have here is that um let me just divide everything by three. So you divide everything by three. This is one. This is one divided by two. Okay, one and a half. And that's it. Therefore, I'm going to pass this P sign to this place. So you will get yourself with W times one and a half. Okay. And equals to P sine of 50 degrees. Got it. Therefore, P equals to minus one and a half W divided by sine of 50 degrees. And I don't know if you see this, but this thing is impossible. So this cannot happen. This is impossible. What I was thinking that it could be possible to flip it around this point over here, A, it's impossible because just who's telling me that? Well, this sign over here. This sign is telling me that precisely. What? What is telling you? Well, it's telling me that if I want to do that, you need a minus force that the one that you assumed. And I assume this thing as correct because this is what the drawing is giving me. So it seems that it should be pointed the other way around. So it should be pointing here, okay? This should be the P that I need in order to produce this, but I don't have that. Therefore, this cannot be possible. This type of movement, this case A, to flip it around A is not possible just because the mathematics is telling me you cannot do that, okay? You need the P to go in another direction than the one that is doing, okay? So, no good. Well, it's not, we are not just wasting time. We're actually exploring possibilities. Now, let's just go to case B. Oh, is there a case B? There is a case B. What would happen? I'm going to erase it so you can see in the drawing. What would happen, for example, if I'm going to pull it, you know, down and then to the left, okay, and then to the left. And what would happen maybe, maybe 
you pull it so hard here with the, the with this py you already have this px over here that maybe around this corner here called p that that's the one that i put over here it just moves like this it seems logical right that if i'm gonna pull it down here maybe maybe around this point this is just doing like that well okay so let's just explore that possibility and that possibility means that i need to put okay so let's just study moment regarding b should be equal to zero let's see what happens if i'm right or wrong by doing that so again i'm just this is a corner okay so this is a corner two, 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 two. this is your point b and let's see what happens okay what you need to do here, so remember for this case, you need to, it's mandatory that you put the normal here. Instead of here, we already did that one, so I'm gonna erase it. So instead of putting it that there, so I'm gonna put it here. And also the force of friction, I'm putting it there, okay? So I'm thinking that at this point, somebody is gonna trip around this point over there. So the, the you will see this is pretty logical somebody's pulling down therefore this guy needs to fall down i i don't care about falling down i'm just thinking about the possibility the possibility of tipping around b this direction okay well that's what i'm going to do so let me just use this okay so i'm going to use another color let me just use this one now nah, that i already used it no, so let's just use the red one to be dramatic okay so let's do that once that I have done that, I will see that PY, uh, I'm just not going to call this Y, PY, I'm just going to call it P sine of 50 degrees. That's the one that's going down, okay? So P, okay, times the distance. And if you remember the drawing, it's one meter from here to there. So one. This guy is minus according to our right hand rule, okay? This is all done regarding B. Now let's just do some other. So now you see the W, it's this way, okay? So W, W times the distance. So from here to there, hopefully you see that this is 0.5 meters, okay? So it's 0.5 meters. And it's actually a plus. So I have two moments competing between them, okay? I have a moment going negative and a moment going positive. They are fighting between each other to see which one is the one that it wins. Well, nobody wins because it's actually zero. They are equilibrated, okay? So they are in equilibrium. That, that's how I will get one of those unknowns. So known, 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 and known. Therefore, I can know that guy now. Therefore, I'm gonna put P, P equals to, hopefully you see this, that this minus goes with this minus because these guys are positive. They're gonna pass as negative. So this minus will cancel out the negative from the other way. So this is just plus, okay, plus one and a half W. That's why 0.5 times W is divided by sine of 50 degrees. And maybe you see that it's actually the same freaking number, but with different sign. So this case is possible, okay? So this case, now it's possible, and I can quantify it. So P for this case is actually um, 115.2544 newtons. Okie dokie. Okay, so I have two values of P here in this problem. I have one, this is value one for P, which is tipping. I'm sorry, sliding, sorry, 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 sliding. And this one, this second value for P, it's the tipping part. Which one is the largest? Well, you will see, well, the largest guy is this one, right? Well, if you applied 115 newtons, therefore, this guy will slide because you have passed this fella here. So you apply 115, okay, 115 newtons, this thing will not tip, but it will slide, okay? Oh, okay, and then what? So actually the result is this one. This is the result of the problem. What they were asking about, about the largest, yeah, the largest so that this guy is in equilibrium. So this guy is the lowest of between these two cases, sliding and tipping, okay? 
So the largest that you can apply so it doesn't move is 72.13. If you apply more than that, let's say 100 neurons, this guy will slide, it won't tip. If you apply 200, it will slide and it will tip. If you apply 50 newtons, it will not slide nor it will tip. Okay, so that's the answer. The largest value of P so that this thing is an equilibrium, it's this 72.13 newtons. Okay, so I actually pick the lowest of these large values. These guys are the highest values that they can withstand for sliding and for tipping. I know it's a little bit confusing, but I think you can grasp those concepts, okay? So, okay, guys, see you in some other time. That's it.